Hello, Mr. Barton here, and welcome to another episode of the GCSE Maths Question of the Week, where every week I try my very hardest to pick you out a lovely question to help you prepare as best as possible for the demands of your GCSE. Now this week, I've gone for fractions, and I know what you might be thinking, come on, I flipping know how to do fractions, blah, 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 blah. But wait a minute. This question is very, I won't say common on the new GCSE, but certainly likely to come up a twist on a topic that you think you know. And look, I've looked at the data on this on diagnostic questions, and you can look too by clicking the link on the worksheet or on the website. Students are having a flipping nightmare with this one. So I thought it was a good one to tackle in question of the week. Let's have a read of it. A baker is making bread rolls. Nice. He divides his dough into eight equal pieces. He then cuts each one of these pieces into three, each of which gives him a single bread roll. He then sells the rolls in bags of four. Whew, bags of four, bags of information that we need to deal with here. What fraction of the original dough, so what fraction of the original dough is in one bag of rolls? Give your answer in its simplest form. Now, hopefully straight away, you can see why people are having trouble with this. It's a lot of information. It's not immediately obvious what you need to do. You've got to think it through. So, you know what I'm going to do if you've been watching these for long enough now? A little diagram. And you also know I can't draw. So, let's try my very best. Let's imagine I've got myself my bit of dough here. Here he comes. There's a nice bit of dough. Oh, my God. Bad start. And it's divided into eight equal pieces. So, one, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six seven one two three four five six seven and eight right not equal but you get the idea right so each of those pieces i think we're safe in saying represents one eighth of my entire bread roll we happy with that he then cuts each one of these pieces into three so let me take one of these pieces let's say this one for example and let's put it here and I'll just make it a little bit bigger for the purposes of the illustration i'm going to divide that little one one into three so if we just zoom in there it's like i've taken that and have divided it up into three now what fraction of the original dough is one of these pieces well you can kind of see because now each of these eights is divided into three and it's going to be the same for this eighth and it's going to be the same for this eighth and so on how many pieces of these little kind of skinny pieces are you going to get eventually well i reckon if each of the eights is divided into three and you've got eight of these, I reckon you're going to get three eighths, and I reckon each one of those is going to be 24, one twenty-fourth of the original thing. So that makes sense. You can fill out all of these, and I reckon if you count those individual kind of thin strips, you're going to get 24 of them. So one little strip is a 24th of the whole uh, dough, and you can get that if you realize that an eighth, and you want to split the eighth into thirds, one eighth times a third is a 24th. Okay. So we're not there yet though, because now he's getting, he or she, I should say, is getting four of these particular strips and he's combining them into a bag to sell. So he's getting four of these uh, yellow, oh, in fact, I'll tell you what I can do, just chuck, chuck one of those on the end, this will save me a bit of time. So he's getting four of these and they're coming together to form a bag of bread rolls, which he's then shifting. So how much has he got here? Well, he's got four lots of 1 24th. So what's four lots of 24th? Well, you can either think of that as doing four times a 24th, if you like doing that, or you can just say, well, I'm gonna do 1 24th plus 1 24th plus 1 24th plus 1 24th. Let's try it both ways. I'll do the add-in first. So 1 24th plus 1 24th is 2 24th. Remember, you don't need to add the bottoms or anything like that. The denominators are the same. 3 24ths, 4 24ths. And 4 24ths, I think, simplify to 1 6th. Or if we do it this other way, four lots of a 24th, well, I've mentioned in previous videos, when I'm multiplying fractions, I always like to change whole numbers into fractions. So I get four times one, which is four, one times 24, which is 24, which is gonna simplify to a sixth. So I'm going for a sixth, and lo and behold, there's the correct answer there. Whew. A lot of work involved there, and I'm gonna be honest with you, please, I know I say this every week, stick around now as we just quickly talk about each of the wrong answers, because that's gonna really help improve your depth of understanding of this, because something like this could well come up. Where would B 124th come from? 
Well, I reckon, I mean, it's a bit unlucky, this. I reckon that comes from this bit. I reckon 124th comes from figuring out what a single bread roll is, but they're not, not reading or not realizing or not knowing how to deal with this bags of four bit. So it's kind of finishing the question a little bit early there for that one. What about four elevenths? Four elevenths have slightly less sympathy for. Because four elevenths for me shows a bit of a lack of understanding of how to manipulate fractions. Imagine here you've got it into an eighth and then into three pieces. Well, I reckon the student there has said, all right, so we've got, let's do it down here. We've got an eighth. We've cut it into three. Let's just kind of add those together or something. Eight plus three, 11. And then, oh, wait a minute, what? We've got bags of four. Well, let's just change that top bit to a four. For me, that's a lack of understanding of how to deal with fractions. So watch out for that one. D, I have sympathy for. 196th. You know, any idea where 196th might come from there? Well, I reckon 196th comes from getting every bit right here. So you've got you've got it to the stage where it's 124. But then when he sees rolls of bags of four, I think that I think the student there thinks, all right, we're gonna split it down even further into fours. So you end up with instead of times it by four, you times it by a quarter, you divide it by four. And I reckon if you do that, you end up with 196, which is a little bit unlucky. So hard question. Um, you know, I always like to try and think of an alternate wrong answer as well. Uh, one that sprang to mind, and you'd be flipping mad if you did this, is 4 over 24. I mean, it's right, but the question's clearly said, give your answer in its simplest form. You're not going to lose too many marks if you do that, so don't stress too much about that. But always just read the question and check that you actually do finish, finish the question in the way it's asked you to do. So there you go. A tricky old question. Look, best way to prepare for this hop onto my website and follow the link on the video or wherever and just do some worksheets or questions or the rich tasks or something like that just to help you prepare for all the different twists and turns that there could be in fractions. But if you're not comfortable multiplying fractions or splitting shapes up, get the basics sorted first before you start worrying about these kind of questions and try the rest of this quiz out. It is a delightful quiz, I can promise you that. And I'll see you for a fresh question of the week next week. Take care, bye for now.